Okay now. <clears throat> so let us start with uh, uh, something which everybody knows in medicine that uh, for uh, preparing for NEET PG, uh, practically <clears throat> maybe 75-80 percent people they take coaching, right? So uh, question is. Uh, which coaching institution is good? And uh, if you want to study that, that which coaching institution is good? Obviously, uh, a coaching institution where success rate of uh, students is uh, better will be a better coaching institution. Na? So, <clears throat> Which coaching institution succeeds or has more candidates succeeding uh, is a good institution and you will like to send your uh, own relatives or maybe friends, uh, children to attend that coaching institution. So, what uh, what are the ways to predict that uh, this institution or suppose you want to know uh, coaching institution uh, which has better outcome. Outcome will depend on what? Which means better outcome means they get admission into PG. So whether a student of coaching institute succeeds or not depends on which factors. Quality of students, right? So that is nothing nothing to do with the coaching institution. So, <clears throat> so quality of teachers in the coaching institution, right? Previous performance of the students, which means a good student will have better performance, right? Ah, so track record of the institute, track record of the institute. So... <clears throat> Yes, that's a good point. Any other thing you would like to say about which coaching institution is good? Marketing. Marketing will be, uh, of course, uh, that, uh, that will not determine the outcome, but it will determine the number of students they will get, right? Enrollment, right. And what outcomes you would like to see? Uh, how many years they take coaching these days before they generally succeed? Two. One to two years. <clears throat> so which coaching institution is uh, good? Uh, where students succeed in one year or two years or three years? One year is better. So time to success should be uh, one year rather than two years, three years. That is what you want to say, right? Uh, so, when you talk of outcomes uh, which you want to measure for the coaching institution, uh, what are the things you measure? One, of course, will be percentage of uh, students who get admission, right? Attrition means we uh, leave the institute. Okay, what else? <clears throat> Ranks, right. So, ranks may be, ranks come as numbers, na? that uh, 11,753. Uh, so, if you uh, look at the ranks and maybe average rank of all the students who attended the institution, you can compare across the coaching institution. Na? Average rank of institution A versus average rank of institution B. Because there will be so many students, so many ranks, there has to be some way of comparing. No? So, comparison will be on the average. At average rank is uh, 11,000 and average rank is 12,000. So, average 11,001 is better coaching institution. So, <clears throat> that, uh, that is one way. Uh, compare the average rank of the institutions. The second way is to compare the percentage of 
students getting success which means admission in pg uh, but another thing which you might think is time taken to succeed whether it is one year or two years or three years is that important or not important so <clears throat> these are at least you are talking about three outcomes one is a numerical outcome number what is the rank second is uh, proportion proportion is percentage of success percentage of failure which means success versus failure right that is that is also called binary outcome or dichotomous outcome <clears throat> and third is time to succeed right so if success is uh, an event then that is what is time to event right event is the success result nikal gaya people have uh, got into uh, means sure to get a pg that means an event uh, has occurred or when they get admission event occurs so these uh, these are uh, some of the outcomes and uh, predictors which you talked about is quality of the students quality of teachers uh, and uh, maybe also and quality of the mock test which they do no they do a lot of mock test and uh, that will also prepare students in a better way so the predictors which you talked about how good are students how good are teachers how good are the tests how good is the curriculum all of these are also called independent variables whereas the outcomes <clears throat> which you talked about is called dependent variable so that is the, these are the two basic concepts uh, uh, whenever you go for prediction you have to be clear about what are the independent variables and what are the, what are the dependent variables so <clears throat> independent variable is the presumed cause of some effect in this case presumed cause is say quality of students or quality of teaching and the effect is that they get admission to pg these are also called exposure variables predictor variables input variables explanatory variables because they explain whether the students pass or don't pass so they are also called explanatory variable <clears throat> and then the outcomes are called dependent variables because that is the effect presumed effect of the independent variable also called response variable so <clears throat> anything which clouds the you know cause and effect relationship between independent and dependent variable <clears throat> or clouds the prediction ability of independent variable to predict the dependent variable is called extraneous variable or confounding variable right <clears throat> and the outcomes can be continuous like the rank of the students which is just a number number can be any <clears throat> that is not totally continuous because continue in continuous continuous is like uh, weight it can be 12.5 rank cannot be 12.5 no there is nothing like that this is not in decimal so that is <clears throat> you can say discrete but it still it is numerical but people loosely call it continuous and uh, pass fail success failure that is binary outcome and time to event means time to succeed in this case whether it is one year coaching two years coaching three years coaching is called time to event type of outcome so <clears throat> are these three things clear very very important to be clear about this continuous binary and time to event okay so uh i want to see whether people who are uh, not in the hall but maybe uh, from outside they should also interact right so i don't know how you will monitor the chat but uh, in any case i want to know how many people attended the research methodology uh, workshop which uh, where dr dwedi had come and uh, uh, we had uh, some more uh, guests how many people have attended please raise your hand
Okay. So if you have attended, you may know the answer to the questions which I am going to ask, but may have forgotten also. But if it comes to you very easily, then hold on for some time, right? Let others respond because I want to see how much people uh, can exercise their mind. So the question I am going to pose is, and Dr. Ganesh, any way to monitor the chat? Ah. Okay. But you look at the chat uh, because after I ask the question, some people may reply. Right? So my <coughs> question is like this. We had uh, six individuals where we observed that those who have weight of 40 kg their systolic blood pressure was 90. Those who had weight of 50 kg, systolic blood pressure was 110. Those with 60 kg, it was 130. Those with 70 kg, it was 150. And these are all single individuals. 80 kg individual had systolic blood pressure of 170. And 90 kg individual had systolic blood pressure of 190. This is hypothetical data, but just to uh, have ease of calculation, I have uh, given these numbers. So, <clears throat> if you have to predict the systolic blood pressure of a, of a person who is weighing 59.7 kg, what will it be based on the observation? Can you guess what the systolic blood pressure will be of a person? Weighing 59.7 kg. 124. So how did you get that? Can you tell me? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 59.7 would mean what? So how did you get that 124? One twenty? Ah, so some people are getting different answers. So better each one of you do the calculation. I had asked Dr. Ganesh that tell the participants to have a pen and paper and uh, a yeah, calculator, right? So, <clears throat> right. So, okay, connection is lost. These are the problems. Anyway, in the meantime, you can do the calculation. So, how did you get 129.4? Fifty nine point seven into a two into nine point seven. I see. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Any any other person had uh, some other way to do this? Ah, right. So. Tell me, 59.7 into 2 came to how much? 119.4 plus 10. So 100, 129.4. You also got 129.4. Right. So, uh, <clears throat> I like this one because this is like giving a formula. Isn't it? What is your formula? Now let him, let him say this. Went into, went, weight into 2 plus 10. Right. So this, uh, those people who attended this, uh, the research methodology, they had done this exercise. Right. You had not attended, had you? You had attended. So maybe, uh, maybe the, this is why I tell you, those who have attended, you please uh, hold for some time. 
Uh, does it work, uh, Dr. Pragya? 2 into 59.7 plus uh, 10. This is what you did, no? Does it work or not? This also works? Uh, right. This is more uh, general type of equation. Therefore, I think uh, it will be good to uh, use this. And uh, if you have to write as an equation, how will you write? Ah, no, but uh, 2x plus 10 equal to systolic blood pressure, right? So, you can write it other way. Systolic blood pressure equal to 2 into weight plus 10. You can also write 10 plus 2 into weight, right? That doesn't matter. So, uh, I think you did the right thing. This is the predictive equation. Based on the observation which I gave you, you derived a predictive equation. And that equation you applied to the person who in question and you got the answer, right? So, prediction requires an equation. That is the point I want, want to make. Any prediction you want to make, if you want to make, uh, uh, let's say, close to the truth prediction, then you need an equation. <clears throat> and uh, that equation has to be derived based on observations. So you have to first have set of observations. Based on the observations, you derive an equation. That equation you can test in another batch of uh, your patients or study subjects. And then you can uh, apply that to predict what happens in the next person or next to next person. So one is deriving the equation and then validating the equation and then using it. Right? These are the steps. So when we said prognosis of a patient, prognosis of a patient you have been doing sometimes based on your clinical experience, sometimes based on your uh, uh, literature or books, sometimes based on scores like SOFA score or uh, yeah, some other score, uh, Apache score, Glasgow Coma Scale score, uh, APCAR score. But remember, all of these, not Glasgow Coma Scale and APCAR, they were derived much before methodology for prediction was matured. But uh, SOFA score, Apache score, they have all been derived from an equation. So they first derived an equation, then they simplified it in the form of a score so that clinicians can use it. And even till date, there are many prognostic models or prognostic methods which use equation. So you have to put it in the equation to get a prediction about your patient. So this is what I wanted to say that uh, prediction requires an equation. Equation requires a set of observations. After you have the observation, you derive an equation, then check the equation whether it works or not. If it works, then you can use it for your practice. The question is, when I gave you only six individuals data, when you have 600 or 6,000 individuals, you can't do it with your eyeballs and your uh, paper and pen and calculator, right? So you need, uh, uh, obviously, some computerized method. You need a software, right? And one of the software which we use is a statistical package called SPSS. SPSS is, uh, stands for a statistical package for social sciences, but... Uh, Basically, it is used very widely in medical sciences also, in all sciences practically, and in business, in economics, everywhere. So, SPSS is one of the statistical package. There are others. Some people use Stata. Some people use R. So, there are many different statistical packages. I am going to show you the SPSS, which is a statistical package. 
you should connect it directly otherwise it will not work acha acha right no no port is there you don't know where it is so it is not not uh, okay okay anyway so i'm so you you keep working on that you keep working on that so uh, i will show you uh something which how spss does it and uh, i have entered the same data and you will see you will see how it uh, so the first co two columns don't look at the others because they are not relevant first two columns are giving the same data can you see the i showed to you and uh, then we can get the same equation which you have derived but uh, the language in which it gives this equation is very different so you have to have the idea of how to write it as an equation and it will ask you what are the independent what are the dependent variable which is the dependent variable usually depending on uh, uh what you are going to use and they use the method which uh, is called regression regression why is it called regression we will talk about it later but you have to use the methodology called regression and regression gives you that equation and in spss there is a command which is called regression command and using regression command you can get the same equation which you have derived and uh, if it works i will show it to you if it doesn't then i can continue with my at least uh, Hmm. <laughs> In any case while they are doing this let us discuss having seen what you have seen do you think weight or increasing weight is the cause of increasing systolic blood pressure how many people would think that it is the the cause of increase in systolic blood pressure is the increase in weight how many people agree with that only one person two persons why others don't agree what do you think what is coming to your mind mm hmm like which other cause will be uh, there in a person who is whose weight is increasing 100 and uh, yeah, 90 kg or he has got 190 systolic blood pressure a person who has 40 kg he has only 90 right so uh, it seems that weight is uh, doing something my question is you think what other factors will be there how will how else you will explain why don't you say that okay so uh, dr pan uh, uh, the lifestyle which is uh, responsible for increase increase in systolic blood pressure also and the uh, one example will be like eating right what kinds of food you eat if you eat lot of junk food like uh, what you call uh, uh, potato chips right 
you keep eating potato chips and samosa and all kinds of stuff that brings what how will it reach it will increase weight but how will it increase blood pressure by increase salt intake right so uh, this uh, potato wafers have lot of uh, salt so you are taking lot of salt so in it is actually your eating habits is the cause of increase in weight and because there is so much salt in that so there is increase in blood pressure also right so but does that mean that uh, we can discard weight when if we have to predict blood pressure no it is a good predictor so it may not be the cause of rise in systolic blood pressure but it is at least for prediction purpose it is very good so that gives another uh, point for you to understand is all predictors are not causal right so they may be associated but not causally associated in which case you should not take a regression equation and say we know the cause but that doesn't mean that you cannot use regression as to study causation you can study but then you have to be thorough in your biology so that you include all the factors which are likely to be responsible then you see if if you know their food you have measured their food and you have all these individuals you know what kind of food they eat you have had food frequency questionnaire you had 24 hour recall you have measured it for over a period of time so you know exactly what they are eating then you find out what is the salt content of that what is the calorie content of that if you put all of those things right and if they don't explain weight but weight uh, they don't explain blood pressure but weight explains it then it may be that your theory about lifestyle is not correct and it may be the weight which is causing this so you can use regression to also find out causation but then what you put into that equation is uh, requires much deeper thinking much more biology knowledge knowledge of biology and then you can use it for finding out causation also so regression is used for two purposes one is for prediction where you don't worry too much about whether it is causal or not causal if it is a good predictor it helps you but if you want to study causation then you have to have very thorough understanding as well as uh, choice of which variables you put there right so in coaching example you said quality of students quality of teachers quality of teaching quality of mock exam all of those are important but there may be some other factors also it may be how much time they spend at home reading about uh, subjects it may be whether they are uh, going to they are doing uh, what you call internship and also doing this coaching and how much time they give to internship in hospital is probably going to determine how much uh, how well they do right so i don't know how much time they give in internship here are they visible or not visible dr guria they are visible uh, so, so few of them so you see maybe those who are not visible are destined for success right or maybe those who are visible are destined for success we don't know so there may be lot of other factors so unless you are very thorough about all the possible factors you will be misinterpreting your regression equation but if your your, your purpose is only prediction then it doesn't matter what other factors are there right so you you have to be very careful so you can see this first two lines first two columns same data is entered now i am going to uh, use this you can see regression and in this case i am going to choose linear regression 
and he says give dependent and independent this is why i started with that and dependent in this case is systolic blood pressure and what is the independent weight okay and then uh, forget about other things just press enter and i know first uh, panel you don't worry second panel you don't worry third panel you don't worry fourth panel you some see something where your numbers are coming 10 and 2 right so you had said 10 plus 2 into 8 right and it tells you 10 is constant and 2 comes against weight but they don't use the word which we are commonly uh, accustomed to which is we call it multiplication factor 2 is what multiplication factor 10 is constant that's okay uh, so 10 plus 2 into 8 2 is the multiplication factor but they call it coefficient right so remember coefficient is nothing but multiplication factor why they call it unstandardized that we will come to later but coefficient means multiplication factor and spss does the same thing which you did by mental math right so that's uh, one thing which so when you look at this uh, table of coefficients then you look at what comes under b and that gives you the equation 10 will be the constant plus 2 into 8 so every output of spss can be written in the form of equation but you have to do it spss doesn't do it because they didn't design it that way uh, i don't know any software which writes the equation for you you have to write it after looking at the output okay yeah so you have to write it in this case you will have to write sbp so somewhere it will tell you that uh, what we were predicting is sbp you see dependent variable sbp predictors weight here also say dependent variable sbp so you you know what you are predicting uh, so you have to write sbp equal to 10 plus 2 into weight this you have to write spss will not write okay uh, that is one thing now coming back to uh therefore but before you do the regression you should do what is called scatter plot right which means scatter plot means i will show you how the scatter plot looks like in spss that means you plot in x axis the independent variable and y axis the dependent variable and then you see whether they fall in a line or not or whatever and you have to ask yourself can you fit a line or you can even ask is there a relationship between the variables or not right you can look at the plot and uh, make it now let me do this for you in spss i don't know whether i'll be uh, long time ago i have done this it keeps changing so it says scatter yeah so i will do simple scatter i have to define it says y axis so what do you want in y axis systolic blood pressure what do you want in x axis right and then say okay right it it has made the plot for you can you see it it's still processing i can see it oh acha it doesn't go there <laughs> okay so when it goes then let me know it has come I don't know why it is not coming full, but I can see full in my computer. I acha acha. I have done it, but 
Mm. Anyway, if you see weight and systolic blood pressure, they all fall in line. This is important to do because the regression which I used is called linear regression. Means it is helpful or useful or to be used only if relationship between two variables is expected to be linear. Or the scatter plot you look at, it suggests, yes, now you can see the full, right? It all falling in one straight line. So if that happens, that means uh, there is a linear relationship. So before you plot the curve, you have to do this. And uh, if it is linear, then use the regression. And remember, we uh, used linear regression. So you have to be cautious about that. And uh, then, coming back to this, uh, let us, uh, let's say, conclude the uh, first part of this. What is regression? A regression is a method of forming an equation, right? Linear regression forms an equation of a straight line. So, those of you who remember their, your math, we had a full, uh, I think, uh, chapter on forming an equation, equation of a straight line. And in the simplest form, there is one dependent variable. In this case, what is the dependent variable? Systolic blood pressure and one independent variable, which is a, a weight in this case. And regression in this simplest form is called simple linear regression, right? Simple linear regression has one dependent variable, one independent variable. There may be a constant term and then uh, there will be a variable term. Constant term is constant. There is one which will depend on the relationship which is called, we call it multiplication factor. And what does SPSS call it? Coefficient. Yes. In also, uh, they may also call it a regression coefficient, right? <laughs> yes. Right. So, you one thing is that you plot it, right? And see whether it falls in a line or not. The second is that you can, there is a test of linearity in SPSS. So, you can do that test also to check whether it is linear or not linear but I think eyeballing is also good enough okay because uh, in in our case you can draw a line no which touches all of this SPSS can draw a line also along this you you can also put a scale and draw a line so one straight line uh, if uh, that is the best explanation of the data points which you see that means it is a linear relationship, okay? And uh, most experts just look at uh, the scatter plot and uh, by eyeballing, they can deduce whether it is linear or not linear, okay? Now, exercise two. Again, those who have attended my lecture in the uh, research methodology, you can uh, perhaps uh, wait for others to respond. Now I will give you a little more data. And that data, can you read it? Right. So that data is, again, what I had told you, but I have added six more people in this. Uh, no, it is a repeat of the same, but that's okay. Uh, it is repeating the same. 40 kg, 90, 50, 110, 60, 130, 70, 150. So basically, it is the same kind of observation which, which uh, I have repeated. Now, first thing is making a scatter plot and drawing a line. Now, you may think that all data points follow a line. They don't. Like this is a data point which is scatter plot of a ticket price uh, and uh, this is perhaps in a cricket game. Uh, game people wanted to attend and attendance over 100 years. So depending on what is the ticket price, 
and how uh, many people attended i guess uh, must be in uh, millions of people how many millions of people per year they attended according to ticket price if you see then uh, if it is just a horizontal line it is not a linear relationship right so you can see more or less you can't draw a line which is uh, let's say anywhere slanting you may draw a line which is horizontal that means uh, it doesn't increase with increase in the price of the ticket number of people attending the cricket team remains the same whether you have price which is twice or thrice or four times five times or six times number of people roughly remain the same so the, that line will be something which will be horizontal which means not a linear relationship whether the first thing is whether there is relationship or not if there is no relationship then you can't talk of linear relationship if there is linear if there is some relationship then you can talk about linear or non linear relations so keep that in mind now let me try to uh, look at spss what i have done is i have entered that data you can see here 40 90 50 100 10 60 100 30 so same data which means two more in uh, five six more individuals came who had similar data profile right now if i have to draw a line and let me try to do it in spss in every statistical package you can do the same thing in 10 different ways you know they have so many options to do but i am going to do it slightly differently this time let me let me see if it works i am going to have explore dependent variable is systolic blood pressure factor which determines is weight uh no 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 not systolic then it will give me from first and second column so i have to remove it i have to remove this also and weight one weight one is my dependent variable sbp1 is my factor and then i'm going to plot it plot it sorry can you see now okay in this case what i have chosen chosen is slightly different and i am saying that you scatter plot fit a line she was asking how will we know spss can also fit a line and uh, i hope it can uh, do it let's see can you see this so uh, uh if you are not sure about your eyeballing then ask spss to do it and if line if line is fitting now don't go with the idea that every time every point must fall on the line right the reason is that uh, there may be points in between so many here and there but overall if it is fitting in a line it will draw a line spss will draw a line for you so if if line cannot be if uh, there is no relationship it will draw a horizontal line if there is a relationship it will draw a line which is slanting so you can you can see this uh, that even after adding these six more people still the relationship is the same right it is linear it is uh, uh, all data points fortunately in this case are falling on the same line little bit deviation here there you have to ignore and when you have thousands of points then impossible that all will fall in one line but as long as there is overall trend towards a linear uh, you can say relationship it is okay you can use uh, the equation so let me let me try and now use the regression so that is why the word linear has to be chosen right regression and linear and then i am going to use the second uh, third and uh, fourth columns which is sbp1 is my dependent variable and 
weight one is independent variable and then i will say okay and you see you get the same result can you see this 10 and 2 so it doesn't matter whether you uh, uh, if the relationship is the same then just as you can think of the same equation spss also thinks of the same equation <laughs> but but there can be uh, different kind of data set also so let's see we we did a scatter plot we drew a line and uh, what we can see is that ah this one i will come to later now i give you another data set which is uh, i will close this uh, not saving it which is this uh, fifth and sixth you can see here now uh, first five people were very similar weight of 40 kg 90 was systolic blood pressure 50 110 so even the first and second column are matching but when it comes to 40 now this individual doesn't have a systolic blood pressure of 90 but it has 100 right not following the same trend 50 50 was 110 here it is 120 60 he was 130 now it is 140 so you can see it is not following the same trend now if i ask you that you form an equation which will be predictor looking at weight 2 and sbp2 can you do this no you can't do it but then the question is what does spss do and let's see what does spss do so i'm going to use sbp2 and because it is not following the any particular pattern and we want to see let us see what it does what it does is what what does it do can you look at that and see it changes the constant right so uh, constant has become 15 but the multiplication factor is same 2 therefore if somebody is 40 kg what will be his systolic blood pressure? Hmm? 95. 40 into 2 which is 80 plus some constant is uh, 15. So 80 plus 15, 95. So in our data, the data which I showed to you, uh, one person 40 had 90 another person 40 had 100 it is neither giving 90 nor giving 100 but giving what average of the two average of the two so what spss does is that it doesn't care to be accurate right it says that give me the data i will found, find out some equation which will give you average of the all the figures which you have right none of it may be correct because the 40 kg two individuals none of them are 95 but then spss says if you want to predict for next individual use the average right that is what it says now which means when you do regression and uh, uh, what regression equation does can you see this yeah you can see this that it predicts the average of the dependent variable right remember this it doesn't predict the actual value it predicts the average value of the dependent variable for a given independent variable independent variable was weight in this case 40 kg and it is giving you dependent variable systolic blood pressure which is 95 which is neither 90 nor 100 but in between the two 
which is average of the two. So, there is some error in this. Isn't it? In every predicted value, there is some error. And uh, now you take any independent variable, 50 kg, 100 kg, 110 kg, all will have some error. And what is that error? Error is the difference between predicted value and the actual value. Right? Therefore, now it, now it is a regression. Regression means you have to combine things in a way so that even if there is some error, at least there is some ability to predict. You can't, can't stop there. You, you had uh, 12 people, you have studied 12 patients and uh, you say that I can't do it. It is, you see thousands of patients. You can't say we can't do it. You have to do it. So SPSS, what it does is that it gives you average value, right? So even if you have 100 people, if for every weight, it will give you average value of systolic blood pressure. So that is one thing which you ought to know. But when it is making all of this, it is trying to minimize that error. Remember, it is trying to minimize the error and this, for that, you want to get the best fitting line. So, if there are so many values, it will make one line, calculate the error, then make another line, calculate the error, make another line, calculate the error. Whichever gives the least error, error means what? Error means difference between predicted value and average value. So, that error he wants to minimize. Something will be below, something will be above. And it, it keeps on trying till it gets the minimum value, right? So, uh, well, some errors are due to points above the line, some errors are point, due to points below the line. And, uh, you know, difference, when you take difference, then above the line difference will be called positive. Below the line difference will be negative. So, if 90 and 100 is the systolic blood pressure, and the SPSS is giving you 95. So, 95, how much is the difference between 90 and 95? There is a difference of plus 5 or minus 5? It depends. Uh, if you take the observed value minus predicted value, then it is minus 5. And whenever it is 100, then observed value is 100 minus the predicted value which is 95, then it is plus 5. If you add plus 5 and minus 5, then what happens? Get 0. So this will happen with every value. Whether it is 50 kg, again, there will be 1 plus 5, 1 minus 5. You add, it will be 0. So, what does SPSS do? Whenever it will add the error, it will come to 0. So how will it minimize? There is no way to minimize. So how is it doing? Anybody can guess? To avoid zero, what do you do? Yes? Dr. Pant, you were saying something? So change the sign, right? Uh, the software doesn't have the capacity to change the sign, right? It will square it, right? So if you square it, it will become... Uh, 25 in plus 5 also and 25 in minus 5 also. This is exactly what SPSS does. That what it does is it squares the error. Right? Then it adds it up. Okay? So each time there is a line it finds the difference squares it adds it up. Again does it this way uh, this is now this way this is what it is. So wherever this square of the difference difference is also called deviation right difference is plus 5 minus 5 deviation is how much difference how much away you are so deviation it tries to fit the line where the square of the deviation is minimum right right did you follow this 
since in prediction there is some error it minimize it wants to minimize the error how to minimize the error by fitting the best fitting line and to do this every time it calculates deviation from the predicted line and squares it adds it and they say how much is this how much is this way how much is this way and least squares of the deviation wherever it is least that is the line it takes right so uh same thing if you simply add the differences the sum total will be zero uh, but does that does that mean there is no error there is error so to make the minus also plus we square the differences and add it and then you sum up all the squared differences and minimize it by fitting the best fitting line the difference in literature is called deviation the method of fitting the line is called least squared deviation the squares of the deviation is made to minimize the least of the least value of squared deviation so the method which we use is called least squared deviation method now the question is why do you need to know it you need to know it because you will have to write in your paper we used a linear regression using least squared deviation method because there are other methods also so <clears throat> then you will see that uh, at the end of this table which you see there is one column called sig and sig stands for statistically significant or significance value how much is the p value a significance you have to decide according to your uh, decision but it will give you the p value so that is what it means now obviously if it is not uh, statistically significant p value will be whatever level you have decided most uh, most often they decide 0.05 so i will show whether using sbp2 and weight 2 where uh, you have already seen the result of this uh, i think uh, there should be output file but i can do it again <coughs> so can you see sig so weight two is it a significant predictor statistically significant predictor why do you say so Hmm? What is the value there? Sig is the p-value. What is the value against weight two? Anybody can read out loudly? No, point zero three seven is for the constant, right? weight is in the second line where the sig value is 0.000 which means this spss uh could not go below it is it is made to go up to three decimal points if the fourth decimal point was five or more then it will round it and make it 0.001 since it didn't do it that means the fourth value was less than 5 so when you report your study you have to report not 0.000 less than 0.0005 right please don't write 0.000 p value cannot be zero right so you have to have p value point 0 uh, less than 0.005 if it was 0.005 then it would have made it 0.001 okay so that is that is another thing i wanted to bring to your notice that you have to read this column as well the question is do you have to read this t my answer is no do you have to report it in your papers no it is uh, just for your knowledge that the t value which was used to calculate p was 2.411 for constant 
21.602 for weight. Uh, so they, it was doing a t-test and de determining the p-value. So that is for the people who do biostatistics, they can go through it. You don't have to read it, don't have to report it and forget about it. And there is something called standard error. That also, you don't have to report about it because based on standard error and t-value, they calculate SIG. SIG is p-value. So since p-value is already you are reporting, don't have to bother about standard error and t. Don't, we don't report it in our paper. So that is, <clears throat> that is uh, another part of uh, the story. I am taking you gradually through the uh, through the uh, you know uh, what you call different panels now <clears throat> I am not going to spend more time this panel I am not going to take today but next time and this panel also will not take today so let me let me stop here because uh, this is going to be I know you can't do it there is another exercise 3 so which I am not going to do today right because that will be for the next day any question? Hmm. Entered the data there. You can enter the data in whatever way. Suppose I want to enter uh, another person, let's say, of 100 kg. I can uh, enter. Yeah, so I have entered the data for... for uh, uh, Taking this class, I had to enter the data repeatedly under different columns, right? And I'm not going to go further uh, today. But what have you learned? Uh, one is that regression is no big deal. Regression equation, you were able to find mentally also. What does it do? It has one dependent variable, then finds out a multiplication factor for the independent variable. And there is some... Whether the multiplication factor, which is called regression coefficient, is statistically significant or not, you have to look at the last column, which is given title of SIG, which is nothing but p-value. And if p-value is less than 0 0.05, traditionally that is what they take as statistically significant. So... That is the column you will see. After looking at that uh, panel, you can write an equation. right? If it was not statistically significant, then you can ignore that uh, variable. You can remove it also from the equation and get only those variables which are statistically significant. There are some situations where you have to keep even those variables which are statistically not significant. I will come to that later. But basically what it says, which variable, uh, variables are statistically significant, which variables are not. What we didn't also cover is, what is this business of unstandardized and standardized? That also we will do later. Uh, you have to use this equation only if there is a linear relationship. Remember this. And if there is one dependent variable, one independent variable, then it is called simple linear regression. And uh, why regression? Because it actually regresses or minimizes the error. Always there is some error in any uh, regression, but to minimize the error, it uses a method called least squared deviation method, which means squaring the deviation, adding it up, and making it minimum. Sir, online there is a question. Yes. If there is an outlier uh, where you're drawing the line, then how to handle that? Right. So one one simple thing is that you remove the outlier, right, and then fit the equation. Because outlier is outlier; it is going uh, completely away from the trend. But before you remove outlier, you have to think about it, right? Is this outlier giving some very important message. Sometimes the outlier gives a very important message. So if you have uh, outlier, 
most experts, most investigators remove it and fit an equation. But my, uh, I would urge that you take out that file, file of that individual. Look at the uh, individual's detail before you remove it. There may be some message in that. Any other question? No. Okay. So I think we will uh, take it further in the next session. I don't want to go beyond one, uh, one hour. Any question? Regression uh, is one thing which uh, I think I told you that uh, in our training in McMaster, there was a course on regression. It covers only two regression, linear regression and logistic regression. Doesn't cover Cox regression or other regressions. But that, uh, that course is of four months duration. Uh, right. So even today, uh, I was reading about another regression, which I have to use in another study we are doing with ICMR. But uh, so we are still learning, but at least basic things should be clear. So we'll cover some part of it next time. If there are no questions, then thank you very much for your kind attention.